Now, for our next disease, let's go and talk about Dollar Spot. And I encourage you, if you're listening to this vi- these videos, because we break them up as well. I have been the lawn guardian that works with me. He breaks the videos up, and these will be broken up probably by the different disease. But I encourage you to listen to all of them or the full-length podcast. Reason being is because I give tips that are, you know, equate to all the diseases throughout each one. And I just don't want you to miss any of those because they all kind of work together. So there'll be a playlist you can also find. But let's talk about Dollar Spot. This is the one that I have the most experience with. And that's because I would see it almost every year. In fact, I would see it every year when I worked for True Green in Northwest Indiana and then over into Illinois. I used to see it really bad in Orland Park to the fact where it would be uh, spots one day, and a week later, all the spots had grown together, and it completely manifested into something different. So I have definitely seen Dollar Spot a lot. The good news about Dollar Spot is if you have it, if you're seeing it in your lawn, and it starts as little silver dollar size brown spots, you can see the hourglass lesions on the leaves or on the blades. If you Google search Dollar Spot Lawn Disease, I did a video. It was actually in our original project lawn in Crown Point, Indiana at the church. It got Dollar Spot in the summer, and I showed you exactly what it did and what it looked like. And if you follow that that uh, particular playlist, you'll see the update videos after the Dollar Spot did not cause long-term damage. And that's a public place that doesn't get any kind of fertilization or anything besides what I was doing, which I kind of even fell off towards the end of the year there. So Go check that out. You'll see Dollar Spot is not a serious problem. However, when you see it, it can definitely send you into panic mode because it does kind of spread. It kind of lives fast and burns out. And as soon as temperatures dry out in the summer, it'll kind of start to go away. It's really a late spring, early summer kind of deal. But it is also a disease of the leaf. And when we talk about diseases of the leaf, that means we can push them out with good, fast growth. So what I would like you to do there, first thing, when you have Dollar Spot, and again, this is in addition to following the best best practices that I mentioned earlier on in the podcast about proper mowing and watering and airflow and all of these things. The next thing you want to do here then, oh, by the way, I just wanted to say one of the other ways that you can sometimes identify that Dollar Spot is coming is you'll see little round spider webs in your lawn in the morning. And what those are is actually the mycelium, and that's the early stages of that dollar spot starting to manifest. Now, in a lot of cases, I would see those mycelium circles in my lawn, but the dollar spot would never do any damage to my lawn because I fed it so fast, everything would just keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. So all I would see would be those little, and I'm using the term spider webs because that's what people think they are. They're little round spider webs that you'll see on your lawn, cool season turf mostly talking to here. But that's what you would see, and it would just grow through. Now, this disease does affect Kentucky bluegrass and fescue mostly. However, centipede also can be affected, perennial rye and zoysia, St. Augustine as well. Like I said, I've seen it in my lawn. But again, I think this is mostly going to be a disease of finer bladed turf like your cool season and like your zoysia. Now, back to it. This is a disease of the leaf, so you can push it out with nitrogen. Same type of deal. I'd like you to give it low-dose nitrogen, one-half to maybe even three-quarter pound nitrogen every 12 days and try to do, you know, if you can keep it down to that half pound, three or four applications in succession, nice and easy, and you should be able to help that to grow out. But very much like red thread, you can do the same other best practices you can apply micronutrients to support healthy growth in the lawn, seek help to stimulate good rooting and healthy shoot and root growth, and humic acid to aerate the soil and chelate nutrients so that way things can be as efficient as possible. These are all things that can be done as well as potassium, which again is also in the OO2 microgreen, but whatever potassium source you can find is also good to aid in recovery from lawn disease. These are all positive ways to help that dollar spot to grow out. If you do want to use a fungicide, same thing here, because it's a disease of the leaf, you want to get a liquid propiconazole. Now, you possibly could just spot spray the spots if they're not that bad. There's no need for a blanket application here if you don't want to go too crazy, and I've done that many, many times, and that's what I would do for customers that didn't want to wait the dollar spot out, because when I worked for True Green, for the most part, we would ask people to wait out the dollar spot. We didn't do preventative fungicide applications. It wasn't something that was in the budget. I don't know if they do nowadays, but we didn't back then. And if people got Dollar Spot, we would mention it to them and we would say, we just need you to wait several weeks here. It's going to go away when things dry out, when temps come back. However, customers that were not willing to wait, and we did have some of those, then I would go out with Banner Max, again, propiconazole, and I would spray the areas, saturate them down real well that had the Dollar Spot in it and it would go away. It would only take a couple weeks. So again, when it comes to the recovery, there is kind of that waiting period because those dead areas are not going to grow out right away. So you can put some dethatch in there to help eat, help eat those up. But let me explain, you know, kind of how to expect, you know, things to recover. I want you to think about, you know, long-term damage because we tell people, 
dollar spot doesn't cause long-term damage, but long-term damage to some of you could be two weeks, whereas long-term damage to me is it's not going to recover this season. So for example, if I find, you know, that you get a ma- major outbreak of grub, uh, grubs, I always call them grub worms because that's a keyword people search, but it's just grubs. If you get a massive outbreak of grubs and you get that and you notice that say in late September, early October, I'm talking to folks maybe like in Indianapolis, say sometime around that, that longitude, Say you notice that in early October and you have giant areas that are dead. Well, that's long-term damage. That's not coming back. You're going to have to reseed or resod that. It's just not going to come back, right? When I say that's long-term, when I say short-term damage or it doesn't cause long-term damage, that's dollar spot. Yeah, those spots will be there for several weeks. They're going to look ugly, but the lawn will recover as long as you continue feeding it vigorously, continue letting it grow. You know, Kentucky bluegrass is a rhizonymous uh, type grass, so it'll start to spread wide. It'll push out. You know, those are the, you know, proper mowing. It'll recover in time. So that's okay. That's not long-term damage, but it's not two weeks. So set your expectations right that if the dollar spot has really infested heavily and some of those spots have started to grow together, it may take several weeks for that to come back. So just keep that always in mind that putting down this shot of fertilizer I'm telling you to put down isn't going to make it recover by next week. So I know I've mentioned that a few times. I know I keep doing that. Repetition is the key to learning. I just don't want you to think that all these things get recovered overnight. It does take a little bit of time. 